Hey guys, it's Shadow the Rat, and for today's video, I want to talk about five things to avoid in a rat cage. And I think this is a very important topic to discuss because so many rat owners get into having rats as pets and they buy a cage that is simply inappropriate. And I'm not just referring to size wise, but also things like bar spacing or the material the cage is made out of, or even some small things that can just really improve your quality of life when it comes to changing the cage or when it comes to cleaning the cage or getting the rats out. So in this video, that's what we're going to talk about. So the very first thing that I recommend everyone avoids when getting a rat cage is large bar spacing. And large bar spacing for rats is anything over half an inch. And this is really important because all young rats and a lot of adults even can get out of bar spacing over half an inch. And even if you don't think your rat can or has the motivation to get out of a cage with larger bar spacing, I'd still recommend getting a cage with one half inch bar spacing or adding hardware cloth to your cage, which is a metal mesh you can zip tie on to make bar spacing smaller. And the reason I recommend this is because I'm part of a lot of rat groups and I have from time to time seen pictures of rats who have tried to escape their cage just randomly one day and had large bar spacing and even if they didn't get out sometimes they will get stuck. Anyways all that is to say I highly recommend getting a cage with one half inch bar spacing and nothing larger. Now the second thing to avoid in a cage is getting a cage that's made out of wood. And the reason you want to avoid a wooden cage is because first of all your rats are going to chew it and there's a good chance that over time they will be able to get out. And second of all, even if you get lucky and they don't chew it, they're going to mark it with their pee. And rats mark everything with their pee. So even if your rats are litter trained for full peeing, they will still mark around the cage with small drops of urine. It's just natural for them. But in a wooden cage, this will cause huge issues because the wood will soak in the pee, it will soak in the smell, and you will never be able to get that out. Now, technically you can coat a wooden cage with something to protect it from urine, but you still have the chew risk. So personally, I would just avoid wooden cages because chances are you're going to have to replace it sooner than later. Now the third thing I recommend avoiding in cages is small doors. And the reason I recommend avoiding this is because you have to clean your rat cage a lot. And if you have small doors, it's going to make that so much more difficult. You know, taking anything out or putting anything back in, it's going to be a contortionist act. And I think most of us just don't really enjoy contorting ourselves to get into the cage. So, you know, large doors are going to help avoid that problem. Plus they also give you easier access to your rats, which I think is super helpful when it comes to things like taming or just making sure all your rats are okay. Now the fourth thing I recommend avoiding in a cage is a plastic base. And this one is honestly something I'm only kind of recommending to avoid because the reality is most cages out there do have plastic bases. I just don't understand why there are so many cages with plastic bases meant for rodents because, well, rodents chew. So you'd think someone would get the memo that a metal base would be better. But anyways, I digress. What I'm trying to say here is that if you can avoid a plastic base, that is great. But realistically, you probably probably can't and so in that case you just want to keep an eye on it make sure the rats aren't chewing it and they're not escaping because that is the main worry if they do start to chew it or you just feel like you'd like to change to you know a more secure sort of base there are places that make both metal and plexiglass pants which can't be chewed by the rats Personally, I have both in my cage currently. My metal pants come from the website Bass Equipment. I did a review on them a while back and I'm going to link that down below. So you definitely have some options out there. They are a little bit pricey, but I think they are worth it, especially if your rats do start to chew out because at that point you're kind of fighting a losing battle with them because they will continue to chew any damaged area 10 times as much as they would if it was unblemished. Uh, which unfortunately is just a thing that rats do. Anyways, with that being said, let's move on to the last thing on my list for things to avoid in a cage, and that is a narrow base. Now, what I mean by this is that a lot of cages out there are tall, but they don't have enough room for the rats to really run around. For some reason, a lot of rat cages seem to be designed with the idea that rats are tree dwellers. Our domestic rats are descended from wild brown rats, also known as wild Norway rats, and these guys are ground dwellers who make pseudo burrows. And so it's important for our rats who share a lot of traits with their wild cousins to also have a lot of ground space and also have the ability to burrow. So when I see these cages that are basically just sticks, I mean they're just tall but they have like only a smallest amount of base room, the rat can just barely turn around in it. A rat cannot live in there comfortably. They need to have at least I'd say two by two feet as a base and personally I would go larger if you can. I think two feet by three feet is a good minimum if possible but two by two feet I would say is the absolute minimum because 
because you want your rat to at least be able to walk around in there and they can't do that if the base is smaller than that. Now, of course, I know some people are going to say, well, my rats love to climb. And the thing is, yeah, rats still enjoy climbing. I'm not saying they don't, but it is important for them to have this ground space and you can't just ignore ground space in favor of height because that is not giving the rats what they need. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the fifth point, but there is one more thing I want to mention, kind of a bonus sixth point, and that is that you want to avoid getting a cage that's too small. And I mentioned this some at the beginning of the video, but I wanted to expand upon it some here because I think while size is kind of the most obvious thing to people, a lot of cages are deceptive in size. Even if you are looking for a cage that meets the 2 to 2.5 cubic feet minimum per rat, which is the pet minimum recommended by most rat owners, it could still be kind of tricky to find a good size cage simply because a lot of places do kind of two tricky things. First of all, the picture of their cage will often look a lot larger than it really is. This isn't always intentional, but sometimes I feel like it is because they'll Photoshop an image of an animal into it, but like they'll shrink the animal, like they'll have a rat, but they'll shrink it down to dwarf hamster size. So the cage will look massive in comparison. So if you see a cage that has some clear Photoshopping in it, Definitely make sure to go down and read the reviews. Honestly, with any cage, you should read the reviews. And on top of that, read the dimensions. This is easily the best way you can ensure you're getting the right size cage because the dimensions won't lie. That is to say, if you put them into a rat cage calculator and you select two or 2.5 cubic feet per rat, it will tell you how many rats can live in that cage comfortably using your settings. Now there is one thing you need to be careful of with dimensions and that is that a lot of cages that have like a stand underneath them, they will include this in the height of the cage. So you need to make sure to subtract the height of the stand when you're putting the dimensions into the cage calculator because if you leave them there then you're basically putting an empty space that the rats will not be able to use because well it's outside the cage. So yeah that's pretty much it for this cage video. I hope I helped you some with things to avoid or at least gave you some food for thought. If you guys have any other tips on things to avoid in cages I would love to hear that in the comments and you know other than that I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you next time. Bye!